Okay, hello everybody. Welcome. Welcome to Mortic Conference Global 2022. Great to have you joining us here. So I'm going to go ahead and get started. Good morning, good evening, good afternoon, wherever it is for you, wherever you are in the world. I'm going to be talking a little bit to you today about what's happened in Mortic, what's progress we've made, and also what's coming up on the horizon. So for those of you who don't know me, my name is Ruth Cheesley. My pronouns are she, her. I work full time for Acquia as project lead for Mortic. And if you ever have any questions or if there's anything you want to know or anything, really, feel free to always drop me an email. You can ping me on Slack. You can find me on social media. And also I'm going to be sharing the slides and also the resources that I mentioned in this presentation afterwards. And there should hopefully, if Twitter works, be a link that's tweeted out imminently uh, with the link to my slide deck and everything like that. So you don't have to like quick frantically take down notes. If you have any questions, please do feel free to use the Q&A tab on the side. Hopefully you've been to a few sessions already this morning, so you might have already seen that in action. It's a really great tool. And I will come to them at the end rather than respond to questions during the session. So before we start, I just want to say a big thank you to our event sponsors, Life Digital Marketing and Drop Solid. Without them, we wouldn't have been able to hold this event. So we really do appreciate their involvement and their sponsorship of the event. So if you see their team members around, do make sure that you say thanks for sponsoring us. Do drop by the Drop Solid booth as well and have a look at what they offer there. Um, it's a great way to get to know other people in the community as well. And also we have a partners program in the Mortic community. You might be familiar with some of these names, others maybe not, but these companies are supporting Mortic practically by contributing month in, month out. And they're also financially supporting the community. So again, without these folks, we wouldn't be able to do a lot of the stuff we're doing in Mortic. So big, big thank you. If you're interested in knowing more, you can use the uh, link at the bottom there to go and find out more or just look at the partners tab on the top of mortic.org. It will tell you a bit about uh, the partners program. So seeing as we have a really nifty uh, poll system in Airmeet, I put together a couple of polls. So here's the first one. How long have you been using Mortic? So give us an answer. Just pick whichever one is relevant to you. And you can't say 10 years because Mortic hasn't been around for that long. So <laughs> It's really interesting to me to know how long people have been around in the community. Let's get a sense of that. Okay, great. I'll wait for a couple of minutes for a couple more votes to come in. Great to see some brand new people as well. Welcome to you brand new people. One or two years or those who are brand new. Really amazing to have you joining us here. Okay, really interesting. Thank you everyone. Thanks for um, indulging me. How do we get back? There we go. Okay. So looking back on 2021, some of you who are brand new you won't have known some of the things that have happened over the last year. So I'll just run through some of the things that we've been up to. I think it has been a year of great progress, actually. I think the last couple of years, we've really made a big difference and we've had some really great successes. For me, it's always great to see new contributors, both individual contributors and also new companies who are allowing and enabling their, their staff to get involved and contribute to Mortic. So the names you see in these two images are actually weighted by the amount of contributions they've made in the last 12 months. So that's really cool, I think. Um, great, uh, great to see people getting involved and people uh, helping make Mortic better. And these contributions are not only code based. I'll talk a bit about that later. Um, so yeah, thank you everyone who has stepped up this year and helped to make Mortic better. So in terms of the progress we've made, I wanted to kind of recap this in terms of our areas of focus. So a year and a bit ago, when I stepped up as project lead, I put together six areas of focus that I felt like we needed to work on as more, with Mortic. And our, our vision really, our mission really, sorry, it was to help people be more successful with Mortic. So the first area of focus that we talked about was about the features and functionality of Mortic. As marketers, we need Mortic to be industry leading, have the features we need to do our job and so forth. 
And I think over the last year, we've actually done pretty well, considering that we don't have a massive amount of resources as a community. These are just some of the features that I pulled out of some of the releases. So there's been really good progress. We've kept to our release schedule mostly, one or two days adrift in a, in a few places. We've had lots of minor releases. We've had the major releases. And it's really great to see some of these coming from community, but also some of them coming from companies, where companies who are relying on Mautic have built something for their own clients, and then they've contributed that, that back to the community so that other people can benefit from those, uh, those features. So really fantastic job. Uh, the other area of focus is around ease of use. And this is something that we're, we're sort of dipping our toe into, but we haven't really fully started working on this. We are already starting to align with some UX best practices. So for example, we move the buttons around, which might seem silly, but if you come to Mautic from other systems and you're used to using the UX best practice, the buttons were the wrong way around. And we're also introducing some changes so that when developers are writing things for the user interface, ultimately this will automatically tell them, hang on, what you've just written is not accessible code. We need to add these things to make this accessible. So we're also trying to make it um, better for people who have disabilities to use Mautic as well. We have a UI UX tiger team. So if you haven't come across the tiger team, the concept of that is a small group of three to six people who are specialists either in a particular area of Mautic or in a particular discipline like UX and user interface, which goes across all of Mautic. And they are like our subject matter experts. They're the people that we go to for advice and to review changes that we're making in that area. If you're really passionate about user interface stuff, about the user experience, about making it better in Mautic, this is a really great opportunity for you to really make a difference. We hope to establish some standards so that we have a clear pattern library that says this is how we do the user interface in Mautic to make sure that Mautic is easy to use, to make sure that we are applying best practices and we're making it as accessible as we can do. So that is a project that that team's going to be working on. If you're interested in that, do join us on Slack. If you haven't got an invite yet to Slack, you can go to mortic.org forward slash Slack, and you'll be able to fill in your email and get an invitation. Then you can join the Tiger Team channel, which is tt hyphen ui ux underscore ui. And you can get involved in that initiative. And then stability is a huge one, because if your business relies on Mautic, you need Mautic to be stable. We need to make sure that we're taking this really seriously. It is a bit of a challenge because we actually, at the moment, only have about 50% of our code base covered by automated tests. And what that means is when we make a change to a bit of code, these tests will automatically run and check that these things haven't, bro haven't been broken. So it's great that we're up from 35%. I mean, that's a fantastic improvement from when we first started making this mandatory with Mautic 3. But that also means 50% of our code is not being covered as well. So we are really dependent on testing new features and bug fixes. And to do that, we need a human, a human who knows how to use Mautic to click on a link and open up a Mautic instance that's ready made for you and test that the bug fix does what it's supposed to do and doesn't break anything else. We're very, very short-handed on people who are helping with that, but we are getting better. And the Open Source Friday sprints we've been doing, where people say, I'll give you a couple of hours on a Friday to help with testing or help with writing documentation or whatever it is you want to contribute. I've made a really big difference with this. So if you're a business or you're an individual out there who makes a living with Mautic, please do consider giving an hour, a two, half a day, a full day, whatever you can, on a Friday to help us with Mautic. It's a great way also to get to know other people and to improve your Mautic knowledge. So we can help get Mautic more stable by having more people involved in testing and by raising the test coverage, but that's a little bit more tricky. We've introduced uh, install and upgrade pre-flight check. So now when you upgrade Mautic, if your PHP version or your database server version doesn't support the version you're trying to update to, it won't allow you to proceed. So it blocks you from updating. And that's been a really big thing because sometimes hosts will not have updated your PHP version. You go to update to the next version and there's a problem. Uh, in the past, actually, we just wouldn't have even shown you there was an update. But now we do tell you there's an update, but we stop you from updating until you fix that issue. 
And we're working on ways to implement checks to make sure all the plugins you have enabled for your Mautic instance also support you updating to the next version of Mautic. Because a lot of the issues we see in the community, in the forums with stability issues of people having Mautic that's just blown up when they've updated can be related to plugins that haven't been updated or that are incompatible. So the new work we've been doing on the marketplace is also an attempt to help us with that so that plugin developers can say it supports this version of Mautic and it will stop you updating if the plugin doesn't support you going forward. Okay, support. So support has been a really important thing. When you're adopting Mautic, you do need some help. You will come across problems. You will come across things you don't quite understand in the uh, documentation. And so the support aspect has been really key. We've got an amazing team of volunteers who contribute on a daily basis in the forums, helping other community members. The forums is where we channel all of our support requests because that's a place where people can find it in search results. When they're typing their question, it pops up similar questions. So sometimes you find the answer before you write the post. These people are really doing an amazing job, but we do need more of them. Uh, so again, if you're able to help out and just answer one question every time you ask one question, it makes a really big difference to the community. And we also have international uh, forums on the forum. So if you want to ask your question in Portuguese, in Japanese, in French, in German, we do have forums where you can do that. So do think about using that because it does also help people who come after you find the answers. We're in the process of completely overhauling the end user and developer documentation as well and replatforming it to a platform which will allow us to version it. So we can say this is relating to Mautic 3 and this docs, these docs are relating to Mautic 4 and translate it. So once we have the base English version, we can use TransFX to then translate the documentation and maintain multiple versions of Mautic documentation um, in different languages. That will apply to the dev docs and the end user docs. I can see lots of hearts and thumbs ups and claps. So yes, very exciting for our international community. So if you wanna help with that, we've got lots of work to do to get to the point where we can translate. If you are a translator, be warned, by November, December, we're gonna be pushing a lot more lines for you to translate. And we have uh, recently been awarded the uh, grant from Season of Docs. So Favour Chibuzi is going to be working six months on a part time basis and actually getting the docs over, improving them and updating them, getting better screenshots, having more consistency. So, again, this is a great help when you're starting out with Mautic to make sure that the docs are up to date, relevant and useful. Um, we are improving the response time to bugs and regressions. So we are getting more developers who are looking at the issues coming in and saying, oh, I'll help to fix that. I know how to fix that. Uh, it's something that we really are trying to be hot on if there is a problem that has arisen as a result of the last update to fix it in the next update. So more, the more developers we can have helping with that, the better. And also the marketing team are working on a content calendar to create more informative blog posts. So useful stuff about how to use Mautic, but also in the wider picture, marketing automation, best practices, strategy, all of that kind of stuff. And again, if you want to contribute to that, you can. We have made some tentative steps, but we're going to be doing a lot more of this going forwards. And in terms of uh, scale, this is a big thing. Particularly, it's been a big thing for companies who are using Mautic with over about four or five million contacts in the, in the database. When you're using Mautic at that scale, it can become quite problematic, quite slow. Some pages become almost unusable. So it's been a big focus at Acquia working on scale because most of their customers tend to be in that region or around that region. And they're now supporting 7 million contacts per instance. And a lot of that work has actually come back over to the community. So we've had lots of pull requests that have been merged in the most recent releases that relate to performance enhancements. So we are getting there. We are working on this and we are making some really good progress. There's also going to be a performance boost with Symphony Mailer and PHP 8 support. Talk about that later. Very exciting stuff. Yeah, you have to wait until I tell you about that a bit more. And we're also working to streamline Mautic's core so that when you install Mautic, you don't install everything. You just install the things that you need for your Mautic instance. 
We're in the early stages of the architecture redesign for next gen, which we feel like we've been talking about for years, but it's such a big project. We're just starting to kind of really get a sense of how that's going to work and what it will mean. Um, but the things we're doing right now are sort of foundational to how we're going to approach next generation. So, and then finally, but actually I think most importantly in any open source project is community. So community is the heart of open source. It's what, it's what keeps us coming back to Mordic, I think, for a lot of us. I love all the hearts as well. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, so we're doing really well, actually. We are seeing continued growth in community members. The, the top one is uh, members and the bottom one is contributions on the, the graph here. So you can see that we've got lots of activity, people active in the community. But the nice thing is we're seeing new members as well as returning members. So we're seeing people coming back month on month as well. And look at that contributions graph. It's going great, isn't it? Really, really appreciate seeing the, the uptick in the contributions as well. We also are seeing a bit of a gradual return to in-person meetings and sprints. We actually started and kicked off things uh, right before the pandemic. So most of what we've been doing in growing the community has been on online. But we have had three really fun in-person events in Europe because that's just where they happen to be held. So we had uh, Mortic Conference Europe in Hassel in November, the Developer Days in Ghent in Belgium, and the Community Sprint in Budapest, Hungary. They were all so much fun. We ate so much pizza in Hassel, honestly. Um, you wouldn't believe. Uh, but I really hope that we do start to see more in-person events happening elsewhere in the world. And I'll talk about that again in a minute. So. so what's up ahead? That's a little bit of a whistle-stop tour of kind of what's been happening. But what's, what's coming ahead? What's on the horizon? Exciting stuff. So what we're going to cover, we're going to talk about what's new, what's coming, and, and your role in making all of this happen. So we'll talk a bit about Mortic 5, what's coming, what the updates are going to be, what the timeline will be. We'll talk a bit about where we're going in the future and why. And we'll talk a bit about how you can help Mortic be more successful than we are today. So Mortic 5, who's excited for Mortic 5? You can show me with emojis because I didn't do a poll for this one. Yay, lots of emojis. <laughs> Awesome. So we're here. Mortic 5 is due at the end of September. That's four months, folks. Like, where has the year gone? <laughs> four months until Mortic 5 is due. It's very exciting, but there's also a lot of work to do to get Mortic 5 ready. And not only on the code side, also, as I mentioned earlier, on the testing, but also on the marketing side, the documentation side. There's a whole village that makes a major release happen. So there's lots we need to do before the release happens. So Mortic 5 will ship with Symfony 5 support. 5.4 is the current long-term support version. That is until November 2024. So that will be the version of Symfony that is long-term support until November 2024. So it does give us a little bit of time. Um, we don't have to sort of rush about like we were with Mortic 3 because we were catching up. Each major release we're doing, we're gradually getting a bit closer to the, to the current version. The 4 to 5 migration is a really substantial upgrade for Mortic. It's similar in scale to the changes in the code that were needed from 2 to 3. So there's a lot of Mortic that needs to be updated. And we're already in starting that at the moment. Some of you will be saying, well, why don't you just go to uh, Symphony 6? Because Symphony 6.1 is out already. Um, well, we do, we would love to, but they don't have the long-term support version released yet. And also, practically speaking, we haven't got the resources to be able to go through all the five versions and all the six versions to get Mautic ready in time in four months. So we'll go to five, and then it probably means that updating to Symphony 6 will probably be in the next release of Mortic, the next major release of Mortic, which will probably be next September, all being well. So September 2023, all being well. Work is underway. However, it is lagging behind. We were aiming to have an alpha release out a couple of weeks ago, and we haven't hit that deadline, purely because we haven't finished the work we need to do to make that release. And there's no point releasing an alpha if you haven't actually got the stuff you need ready for that. A lot of the code that we needed to do for 5.0 support was done, 
at the developer days and the community sprint. So huge kudos to the developers who came along to that and literally sat at their laptop banging out these pull requests and, you know, literally for like three, four days solid. We're almost 70% of the work, the basic work that needed to be done is done. We do, however, need to review them and test them. So if you go to uh, GitHub and you filter by the uh, milestone of 5.0 alpha, you'll see the pull requests that need to be tested and reviewed. If you can prioritize those, that would be amazing. Uh, we will have some contribution sessions later to tell you how you can do that, uh, or you can just join us on a Friday. There's also a lot of development work that needs to be done to update our user interface to use Twig rather than PHP. So basically every single view that you use in Mortic pretty much is written in PHP templates and Symfony have deprecated and removed that functionality. And we now have to do that all using Twig. So it's a bit of a grunt work job. You have to just go through and replace them all. It's a bit of a boring job, but we do need to do that. So if you could help, maybe you could donate a tester or a developer for a couple of hours on a Friday to help us stay on track with that. Drop me a line, send me a message, send me a Slack, write me in the post if you want, because <laughs> we really do need some help to make sure that we get this release out on time. Mortic 5 will ship with PHP 8.1 support. Woohoo! This has only just been confirmed, so this is hot off the press. Supporting PHP 8 has actually, it's been a lot of work. We've had to do a lot of work and fix a lot of bugs that it threw up in our face. And we had several dependencies that were blocking us from the uh, update. So 8.1 with Mortic 5. And this is very hot off the press, literally yesterday. Um, we are thinking about making a release for Mortic 4. So this will be a, a final minor release for Mortic 4, which will be 4.4, got all the fours there, which will only include support for PHP 8.0. And or we might make the next patch release, so like 4.3.2, for example, we may make that into a minor release if the work is done in time for PHP 8 support, because we do appreciate that people are not going to be able to jump straight to five, but they may need to have PHP 8 support. So fingers crossed we'll be able to get that done within the next couple of months, hopefully. And now this one is the very exciting one. It probably doesn't seem very exciting. Uh, Symfony deprecated Swift Mailer, and they said we have to start using Symfony Mailer. So it's the thing that basically fires all your emails out of Mortic. So it's kind of a big thing. It's quite important. This work has been done by uh, Mohammed from Steer Campaign, and the work he's done has been awesome, phenomenal. And it gives some really great gains for the marketer. One of the gains being your sends are going to be up to three and a half times faster than they are when you're sending with Mautic 4. So that is massive when you're trying to get a campaign out, especially if you're trying to get a campaign out that's time sensitive. You need this to go out as fast as you can. But also it's going to mean less memory consumption, less storage consumption issues, less performance issues. Uh, Mohammed and his team have tested this to run with 32 processes simultaneously processing emails. And he's like, it just runs like a dream. So basically, you will be able to use a database type, uh, database based spool, or you can use um, a queue system like Redis or something like that. There's a bunch of email providers already supported by Symfony, and we can write plugins for other email providers. So I won't go into all the nitty gritty, but this is a very exciting improvement that will come with Mautic 5. And the PR is there ready to be tested in the GitHub repository. So if you're interested in this, you can have a play with this and have a test and give us some feedback. OK. Considerations for Mautic 5.0. There are some things that we are thinking about doing that we want your feedback on. So removing the calendar bundle for Mautic. It's clunky. It's a bit naff. It doesn't really work. People don't really know how to use it. And when you're at very high um, performance levels, uh, it, at very high scale levels, it becomes a real problem performance wise. We're thinking about removing it altogether or worst case scenario, taking it out of Mautic as a separate plugin and having a group of people maintain that as a separate plugin and improve it as a separate plugin. Go to this link, give your feedback on the forums, tell us if you like it, hate it, whatever. 
uh, and we'll make a decision on that. But it would be 5.0 that we remove it in if we're going to remove it. We're talking about removing the ability to update your Mautic instance in the browser. Now, anyone who's anyone in Mautic and who's done updates know that this should not be allowed. You should be updating at the command line. Remember, I have that on an automatic text replace on my Mac. That's how often I have to <laughs> say this thing. What we're looking at doing, so we've already deprecated it and put a message in Mautic that says you won't be able to use this upgrade functionality in the, in the future. You'll have to do it command line. We'll replace that with a now you can't use it. And here's the instructions on how to do your update. And we'll basically block people from using that update process. This is a huge thing for stability. People end up with broken Mautic instances. They end up with problems because their database hasn't run the schema updates. I think it's really important that we do this. And we do still need some help to actually get that over the line. But I personally will be really glad uh, to have that happen. And also removing the legacy email and landing page builder. We've had great stress since Mautic 3.0. One, 3.2, something like that. Um, it's getting more and more stable. But in order for us to confidently remove the legacy email and landing page builder, we really do need a stronger team of people supporting the builder. At the moment, this work is all falling on one or two people's shoulders. And it's just not enough to get through the bugs we have and to get the builder to a really stable place where we can confidently say, let's get rid of the old one. This is a lot better. So if you want to help with that and you can contribute to that, Great JS hyphen builder on Slack. Please shout, let us know. We really do need some help. If you can't help practically as a contributor, you could fund this project. If you go onto Open Collective and look in our projects, there's one for the builders initiative that would allow us to actually hire in a contractor to help work with issues that we need to get fixed. So there's two options there for you to support us on that one. So. Where are we going in the future? That's Mautic 5, which is like the very near future, coming up in a few months. What about the, the longer term? So if you've been to my keynotes before, you might have seen the vision for Mautic, this slide that I talk about. The bits I want to pull out really are about the, being a fully featured and scalable marketing automation layer and about delighting marketers who use the product and the customers who are obviously consuming the communications that we send out of it and allowing us to create that integrated, personalized digital experience. This is my vision for what Mautic will become in the future. We're, we're part of the way there, we sort of do it, but we don't do it like, yes, that is totally Mautic. You know, we're sort of like, mm, yeah, we're sort of there at the moment. So I want us to get to the point where we're like, yes. So how are we gonna do that? Well, there's a few projects, I've sort of hinted about some of these, Reducing what ships as Mautic core just to the bare essentials, letting the user pick what features and functionalities they want to use, and then retrospectively add more as they grow in their marketing journey. So you're not faced with like an onslaught of all these different things that you don't know what they are and you don't know if you need them. But also performance wise, if you never use stages, take it out. If you never use points triggers, take it out. Just use it in the campaigns, for example. Implementing new features and functionality to make sure that we are remaining competitive and that we are becoming the first choice for Mautic, that we get a seat at the table for marketing automation decision makers. They are considering us seriously when they're looking at what tool set to use, whether that's self-hosting, whether that's working with one of our SaaS partners, Mautic has a seat at the table. And then finally, I think growing our community of contributors and just raising awareness of Mautic the power of Mautic, what you can do with Mautic all around the world will also be a massive part of this. So slimming down Mautic core, I've affectionately called it. What are we going to do in this one? So the goals for this are effectively only install what the user needs so we can improve performance, reduce the complexity and create a better user experience. We want to make it easier with this project to add and remove features in the same way that we do plugins. We want to let the core team of Mautic focus just on the core so they can get that really awesome and stable with careful handover of anything that we take out of core to a team of maintainers 
who will look after those extra plugins that we don't have in core anymore. So that also enables them to move faster because they know the, the plugin, they know the software well, they can then move much faster. Detangling the plugin dependency spaghetti so that plugins really are isolated to their own code base. And if they're dependent on other features or plugins of Mortic, they are explicitly declaring those dependencies. So it's really clear. At the moment, if you turn off one of our plugins, it just breaks your instance because it's dependent on other things and things like that. So just getting a bit more professional as well about how plugins work in our ecosystem. Composer, which you may have heard earlier, uh, Matthias's uh, talk, was fundamental to all of this happening. This is why we were pushing so hard to get Composer support into the four release uh, back way back when. It seems like ages ago, doesn't it, 4.0? But this underpins a lot of this innovation. The Composer initiative enabled us to create the marketplace. Marketplace is now implemented. We are still refining and improving it. Developers who've created plugins, you need to make the plugins support the marketplace and then submit them from review so we can add them to the allow list. If you haven't done, them, done that yet, it won't show in the marketplace. There's a blog post on the Mortic.org website about the marketplace so you can read up on how that all works. So the next step effectively is decoupling all of these plugins and features into their own little entities. It will help us reduce bugs. It will help us to deal with features in isolation. And a bit like I mentioned earlier, it will also enable us to have this install at will behavior where people install Mortic Core and we define what is actually required, mandatory to run Mortic. But then we say, OK, you've got Mortic ready. Do you want any of these other features? And it could be that we say, are you using Mortic for this kind of scenario? Great, you need these things. If you're using Mortic like this, then you need these things. Or the expert user could go through and tick the things that they want if they know what they're doing. So the decoupling and install at will, these two things need to be scoped out. Ideally, we want to start working on these towards the end of this year, beginning of next year. So if this is something that you are passionate about, you want to be involved in as a project manager, as a developer, doing the user experience, helping us market it, document it, these are the projects for you to get involved in. And we would love to have your involvement. So that's that start. What about features and innovations? Because this is something I hear quite a lot is like, oh, we need this feature, we need that feature. We, there's loads of things we could introduce to Mautic, but these are the things that I definitely want to see us introducing and working on and why. So we need to address some of the feature gaps. There are things in Mautic that don't work as well as they should do, or we simply don't have features or it's really complicated for a marketer to use our system because we don't have certain features. The first step in that is developing a roadmap so people know what we're looking at introducing and they know when it's roughly going to come. Not only stuff in the community, but also what companies are working on in the next year or so and what they're planning to contribute back to the community and community led projects. So if someone's working on something in the community and they want to have that involved on the road, included in the roadmap. Establishing ways for features to come to Mautic other than voluntarily. So companies contributing features, but also us saying, we need this feature. We haven't got anyone who can work on this in their spare time. We need to fundraise for this. It's going to take us X weeks of a developer working X hours. This is the amount we need to raise. And then we go out for a funding round to try and raise the funds to actually create that feature. So I'm really hoping that we can think about that as well proactively about some of the features that we want to see in Mautic because ultimately they will benefit the companies and you don't have to build it yourself if your clients would already want it. And associated with that is exploring creative ways to raise funding to support initiatives and to decide how we spend our money. So it's not just me saying I think we should spend our money this way. We can actually decide that as a collaborative community. So Parts of this, the roadmap. So we did publish a roadmap this year. It's on the website. If you have a look at mau.tc slash roadmap, you'll be able to find that. We aim to review this every year. And I do reach out to companies and say, hey, what are you working on in the next year that you think are going to contribute back to the community? Could we add that in the, the roadmap so that people know that's coming or that you're working on it? And if they're interested, they can go and find out more. 
As I mentioned, I want us to explore a bit more about the budgeting so people have a sense of how much money we have, how we're spending our money, and also like if we want to do certain things, how are we going to raise the money for that? Enabling individuals and companies to contribute to features and innovations like that. There is a legal and finance channel as well. So if you want to uh, join that channel, you can get involved with all things legal and finance. It's usually me, myself and I chatting because nobody else cares about it. <laughs> the campaign library. So if some of you came to Mortic Conference Europe, you will have seen my video of the, uh, the preview of sort of what I want um, campaign library to do. But this would allow us to have a library of campaigns in Mortic that helps new users get jump started. So it helps them understand how to use Mortic and get a head start. And also resource management. So we already have the UX stuff done for this. We just need to find some people to work on this as developers. And that is allowing you to organize all of the stuff in Mortic by project. So you can very quickly go and find all the campaigns, emails, segments, forms, assets related to a particular project. You could even potentially do rolled up reporting for everything in that project in one place. And it just will bring a bit more sanity to the lives of Mortic administrators or marketers who are using Mortic. And also as a side to that, also being able to archive things is another thing that I think would be really helpful. So again, this is something we're looking at next year probably because we do need the development resources. So if you care about this and you wanna get involved in whatever way you can, give us a shout, we'd love to hear from you. And then community growth. So in terms of community growth, um, I really want us to grow our community, but I want us to make sure we do that by maintaining our welcome friend, welcoming, friendly and supportive culture. I want that to be central and key. People need to feel welcome. They need to feel supported. They need to feel that they can come to the community for help and also to encourage more people to get involved in contributing in whatever way they can and that they feel valued in the way that they are contributing. So raising awareness of Mortic, raising awareness of the amazing community and all the lovely people here who are contributing and helping Mortic actually be what it is. Improving our onboarding resources. So if you know that you want to contribute as a writer or as a marketer testing features, or you want to help with SEO work, we can provide you with steps on how to get involved. And supporting all of our contributors, including those that have been around for a really long time to give what they're able to give when they can and how they can. So we're not overburdening just the few, which is what's happening at the moment, really. We have a very few contributors who are doing a, a real lot of work. So the Promote Mortic initiative, this is an initiative for this year, telling people outside of the Mortic bubble what Mortic is, what we do and how to get involved in trying it out. Team is forming, so if you're interested in helping us get the message out about Mortic, do join that, that team. Contributor experience, we're going to have a session this afternoon. It's in about three hours' time in track three about the contributor experience and how you can get started in contributing with Mortic. So I'd encourage you to go along to that session. And then also maybe tomorrow we've got a booth for the community where you can go and chat about how to get involved with Mortic and, and how you can get started. I think there may even be some people around there today as well. So definitely do get involved with that if you're interested in helping us improve the contributor experience. The marketing team are looking at doing some direct outreach, working on cross-channel campaigns to target people that we want to know what Mortic is specifically. So if you're a marketer and you're really good at outreach, please come and give us some of your expertise in the marketing team. And finally, we're looking at local communities. So now that people are starting to get a bit more confident with getting back together in person, we are focusing on getting in-person meetups running again. And we are hoping that we'll see some local multi camps, so like a conference, but for a specific country or region um, in, in our local communities. So if you want to start a meetup group, we're ready to help you. Just let us know. So... Finally, Mortic is about all of us. It's not just about me, it's not just about the contributors, it's about everyone. So how can you help Mortic become more successful? You're really the key to our success. Without your help, Mortic cannot grow to its full potential. So 
what we're going to talk about is how you can help promote Maltic, how you can contribute and how you can support. And I know I'm running a little bit short of time, so I might be a little bit of a whistle stop tour. I've been yabbering about too much. So promoting Maltic, spreading the Maltic love. How you can help. Start a Mortic meetup in your local area. It's a great way of raising buzz about Mortic. It's a great way of helping people discover Mortic by having someone sitting beside them helping them out. Great way to raise your knowledge as well because you'll be doing some sessions and you'll probably be inviting speakers as well. So I do encourage you to think about that. We can give you a meetup.com account and help you get started. All you need to do really is find a location and someone else to help you run the group. Speak about more ticket events, conferences, meetups, networking, basically anywhere you can. Go out and have a go at speaking about Mortic and what it is and why it's great for business. We're also working on a pitch deck that will allow, uh, help make it easier for people to sell Mortic. And we need case studies in different languages as well as English. So if you've done really awesome work with Mortic and you've got permission from the client to share that as a case study, please let the marketing team know. They can give you a template and help you fill that template in so they can bring that into our case studies. Tell us about the awesome things you're doing with Mortic. Quite often I only hear about these amazing stories until once there's a problem and someone's like, I've got this problem with licensing. And I start talking to them about what they're doing with Mortic and it's just amazing, I'm really blown away. So do come and tell us your success stories. Tell us how you're using Mortic. And then write about Mortic. So blog posts, tutorials, best practice guides, and think about contributing them back to the community. We'll always use a canonical link if they exist already on your website, but it really does help people to find these informative resources on the Mortic.org resources. And then finally, how you can contribute to Mortic. Not finally, penultimate, one after this. I'm getting ahead of myself. Open Source Friday Community Sprints. I think I already mentioned what it is. Please ask your boss, if you're not the boss, that, to give you some time on Friday. If you are the boss, give your staff some time on Friday. If you're really passionate about an area of Mortic, like you really love campaigns, or you really love webhooks, or you're really, really focused on forms, or there's something that just really excites and inspires you, think about creating a Tiger team. So a Tiger team will help us to get really good at that particular area because we've got someone who is really specialist and who really, really knows in depth how that works. And block out some time every week to give back to Mortic. I even have to put time in my diary to say, this is my community contribution hour because I just get so busy with meetings and doing stuff. So do please put an hour or two in your calendar, just have it as a recurring weekly thing where you can help us to make Mortic better. And these are just some of the ideas that I picked up the top of my head or from Jira, ways that you could help us. Everything from doing an SEO audit, updating a page on the docs, creating a wireframe for a new feature, create some designs for social media, all kinds of things there. So I'm sure that you will find something that you can contribute that will help us make Mortic more awesome. And then if you can't do any of those, because I do totally appreciate some people are just so flat out and they're so busy, they don't have the time to help. You can also financially support Mortic. But any amount that you can give us is helpful. You can become a regular supporter on Open Collective or on GitHub, um, $5 a month. You know, it helps, it all helps. If there's a project, an initiative, or a bug that you want fixed, you can also back those things. So there's various ways of doing that. You can help us to make sure that we get someone working on those projects. And also, Eki mentioned in the um, opening session, we really, really struggled to get sponsors for this event because everyone's like, nah, online events are so last century. We're just doing in-person events now. For us, these events are really important because you guys are all over the world. You folks are from like every continent, I think Eki said. And it helps us to have it online because it means you don't have to navigate visas and things like that. So please do think about supporting events like this, speak at events, host events locally in your country, bring our community together because that is what inspires people and that's what excites people. So poll time. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Oh, some people have already seen this one, but I will show it on the stage. How are you planning to help Mortic? So if you haven't already answered this, answer it. 
what do you think is going to work for you out of the things that I've mentioned? And obviously there are other ways. I was actually limited. You can only have six options. So I had to think a bit carefully about these options. But these are all ways that you can help. You can contribute to Mortic. You can make a difference and it will make a big difference to us. So great. Looks like we've got some meetup groups there. That's great. I'm sure Eki will be happy about that. Promoting more to case studies. Amazing. I really, really want to see more case studies. And yeah, joining Open Source Friday Sprints. It's a great way of just getting together and having a lot of fun. Fantastic. So I hope that's given you some uh, ideas, some insights to just round up. Um, Mortic 5 is coming soon, very soon. It will be here very soon. So get ready. <laughs> And also just to recap on the strategic initiative. So these are the areas that we're really trying to focus on to deliver some of the things that I've been talking about in this presentation. Um, so you will hear us talking more about them. If you want to get involved with them, please do. Like I said, even if you're a project manager, you can help us by herding the cats and making sure people are doing what they said they do. Everything helps. It really does help. So that's me. I'm sure I've talked to you about. If there's any questions, do please use the Q&A. Um, if you want to come to the stage, you can raise your hand. Uh, if I can fathom the technology to bring you to the stage, I will. So uh, a question from Julio. So we understand that campaign library and resource management is expected for Mortic 5. No. <laughs> so we're expecting to start work on those next year. So the earliest I think that will be is like a, a minor release of Mautic 5, like 5.1, 5.2, maybe not even until Mautic 6. It just depends on um, if we can get developers and uh, contributors to work on those things. If we can get it done in four months, then absolutely we can, <laughs> we can definitely include it in Mautic 5. But I think that's quite a tall order. So yeah, sorry if that disappoints. Um, okay. Question from Steve. If today we have a specific feature or a bug request, we want to put money behind, what's the best way to do that? So if the feature is a strategic initiative, so it's one of the things that I've talked about, there will already be a, a funding pot on the Open Collective, opencollective.com slash Mortic where you can go and actually make a financial do donation directly to that initiative. So there's still one there, I think, also for the Builders and Composer, which were initiatives last year. We also have, for features, say you have a feature that you have posted on the ideas forum on uh, forums.mortic.org slash, slash idea, I think it is, and people are really interested in it. Um, you can potentially decide that you want to start working on that. Ideally, it would be great if you came to me or the product team and said, look, there's interest in this feature. I want to work on it. I'm willing to fund my developer to work on this project for, you know, three months. It's best to come to us first so we can make sure that you have a good idea of the brief and like the how to do stuff in Mortic. If you don't have developers yourself, but you're like, I desperately need this feature, like the campaign library or the resource initiative, things like that. We can also create a tier on um, uh, the Open Collective. So there's one called, Gen I think it's called General RFP Fund or RFP General Fund. And within that, we can have separate projects. So you'll already see one, for example, about transactional and operational emails. And there's a couple of other um, projects there where we've got a brief written up and we need developers to work on them. So, yeah, the first thing I would say is, like, come to us for features. This is come to me, come to the product team and say, I want to fund this feature or I want to I want to put developers to work on this feature in terms of bug bug fixes. So uh, we have uh, bounty source. So you can use bounty source as an integration uh, with GitHub issues. So you can just go to bountysource.com and find the issue and, and put money on it. We did have some issues with that about six months ago, and we were looking at another platform. But I think we're probably going to go back to using Bounty Source. So that's a way of like directly giving a developer money if they fix a particular issue. And you can have multiple people chip into that. So you could chip in five bucks. Someone else could chip in 20. Someone else could chip in 100. The more people contributing, obviously, the more the developer is able to claim when they fix the bug. 
So that's that's another way of, of getting things fixed. And also you can just literally be like, I have this list of bugs. I'm going to hire a developer and have them make those contributions back to the community. So they fix it for my clients, but they make a pull request to the community as well. So those fixes come back to the community. So hopefully that's answered your question. Uh, Question from Bill. Will there be a built-in email opt-in instead of having to build a campaign for opt-in? So with the campaign libraries, ideally what we will have is a best practice double opt-in campaign that you can literally press the button and say, I want a double opt-in campaign. And it will spin that up for you and it will give you template emails, template segments. And you obviously would have to customize the emails and you might want to copy and paste into your own theme or whatever. Um, but that's the idea of the campaign library project is that we can have those best practice campaign bundles that give you everything you need. So you don't a you don't have to like do it every time you could use the community provided one. But also because this technology would allow you to import and export campaigns and all the resources, it would also allow you to have one that you use for every client and just have that pre populated in every instance by just importing that campaign. So you could make it specific for, for your use case. And yeah, potentially you could do the same for SMS. I saw your follow-up question about it for SMS. You could do the same with the campaign library initiative for that as well. So it's a really cool and exciting thing. And a lot of other marketing automation tools do this already. They already give their customers a bit of a heads up by giving them like, this is how you should be doing this. So I feel like it's something that's really simple that we should be doing. And another thing that I really like, which is not an initiative, it was actually a season of, doc, a season of code proposal I made, was about having like a, um, a, a walkthrough that takes you through Mautic if it's your first time using it. So like telling you where all the different features are, what they do, where the documentation is about that feature. Um, it's not an initiative, but I would love to see that as well. And I've done a bunch of research on it. So if someone would like to pick that up, just let me know found a whole load of GitHub libraries that we could do, use to implement that. So yeah, there's already some research for that. So, okay, any other, oh, there's something in the chat. Let me just check. Uh, time zones are, time zone or UTC on Fridays. Any any time on Fridays, most people at the moment are based in the EU. So most of us will be around in EU time zones, but the more people we have involved, the wider the time zones we can cover basically. Um, do we have support for MGML in the GrapeJS builder? Uh, yes, GrapeJS, the email part of GrapeJS uses MGML. Um, so it creates MGML themes. Uh, if you use Paprika, Briens, Confirm Me, or Truly Personal, they are all MGML themes as well. So, awesome. Any other questions? I think we're coming up to time. We've got about five minutes. So anything else anyone has a burning desire to know? Awesome. Okay, thanks everyone for joining. As always, as I mentioned, if you've got any questions, drop me an email, ping me on Slack, message me on the AirMeet event. I'll be around for the whole event. I'm gonna hop over to the lounge now. So if you wanna chat further about anything that we've discussed, I'll be in the lounge for a little while. Just come hang out and have a chat. So thanks very much, everyone, and hope you enjoy the rest of the event. Okay, take care.